thanks for the uh, opportunity, Chris. Um, uh, my take on uh, the discussion today, a lot of it uh, actually is uh, true about uh, the region. It's going through a, a transformation. Uh, and uh, the good thing about it that we see much more entrepreneurial spirit uh, that's uh, coming up. Uh, on our side, uh, we invest in uh, early stage uh, and seed capital for in internet uh, startups throughout the region from the UAE till Egypt. And we have several investments uh, right now. When, when we look at investments, what we uh, value, is what we look at is uh, the entrepreneur, how passionate, how serious they are, but also how adaptable they would be. Uh, because, uh, as you know, our market is not just one market. We have so many different countries, and each with its own set of demographics and, uh, and the way people think and are different. And we're fortunate enough to have within our investor base people who are uh, from different parts of this uh, uh, of the region who can help the entrepreneurs open doors and uh, so adaptability understanding of the region is very very important to us and uh, whether they have the uh, uh, what it takes to actually take the the, the business forward so uh, aside from uh, getting entrepreneurs to come to us what we also have we have ideas that the investors are excited about and we're looking for entrepreneurs to take them forward so uh, you know it works both ways fantastic great great to hear from you but maybe you want to take us to Google the vendor of the product like uh, the vendor like Adidas is gonna sell its products so is it uh, necessary that uh, they make their own sites for uh, selling their product so uh, I think it depends on what sort of products you 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 have if it's a niche product that you have uh, you know, value control over, yes, you should start by, it's an easy no-brainer to start with your own site, right? But you should also not stop there and consider other distribution channels to, to list your products elsewhere as well. Uh, but if you're, you, you don't think that your product has any significant distribution, then it doesn't make sense because your core business is not in designing and maintaining a site, right? So, Unless you depend on e-retailing as your main source of revenue, it's gonna. You, you might want to consider doing other things first, and then explore that stream by. Low, so it's a lower risk option, I think. In, the near in, term. in a way, you're saying whatever it gets to the most people fastest is yeah. really the answer to that. Perfect. Yeah, and there's actually I'm gonna use a plug for one of the startups in, in Jordan called ChopGo.me that helps offline businesses go online in a very fast way. Uh, let's go to Cairo. Hi, I'm Hi, we have a question uh, from Abdul Rahman um, to the whole panel, but specifically to Ali Habib. Yes. Uh, I'm Abdul Rahman from MyNewMall.com. My question is uh, regarding uh, what Ali uh, Habib said about that uh, the investment market is not mature enough in the region. So my question was, we are a part of the region. So when we should see that, or for us as an entrepreneur, uh, when we should uh, see a new market in investment, or in you know, other words, how can we find uh, an yeah, easy way for finding an investment for our uh, startups? Thank you. You know, it's always good to, to approach an investor and to build a relationship with the investor. You know, it, uh, from the moment you start thinking about a, you have an idea and you, you want to build this business with it, start talking to investors. Okay, start building a relationship, start uh, asking, you know, asking them what they want and start really testing their value proposition with them. Uh, it's very important because they could guide you in a lot of uh, in directions that you haven't thought of in terms of the application of your product and in terms of the market size, the obstacles, the competition and so on. So don't wait. Now, when you will get the money from them, it's another story because, you know, there, there is the seed, early stage, and so on. And I would suggest that uh, know exactly what, what, what your uh, capital needs are today, the day after, and the, the day after. And the investors are always interested in big markets. Think big. Talk big. Because if you come to an investor and, and tell that investor, I'm going to be a $2 million business in five years. You lost the investor. 
Yes. Okay. So think big, come with big numbers, because as we mentioned, we want exits. We want exits that make a lot of money for the fund, that make a lot of money for our investor, and to actually make a lot of money for the entrepreneur. So to have enough money to go around, the market has to be big, the opportunity has to be big. So put it in that framework. But don't wait to start talking to us. Yeah, I mean, look, talking to investors is not a transactional thing because one of the key things that we do as investors is uh, we try to figure out if we're comfortable with you as an, as an entrepreneur. And when we're not, it's actually one of the hardest things to say that we're not comfortable. Uh, and oftentimes, that's one of the reasons why we would not invest in, in an entrepreneur. And we may not be comfortable for a whole variety of reasons. Um, but it's, it, that, that relationship element is, is critical. And I think any opportunity one may have to work with you know, somebody, an investor, you know, have a meaningful kind of relationship, do something together, I think it's, 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 um, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's an opportunity one should absolutely uh, take if, if you're thinking of you know, raising money down the line and so on and so forth. And at the end of the day, that relationship is valuable in many ways because you know, what we always try to do is, you know, whether we invest in a business or not, we always try to help. So we'll, we'll make connections, we'll introduce people, uh, we'll offer candid advice. Uh, so there's no harm in building that relationship as early as possible. James, can you give a sense of inflection points in Asia or elsewhere that might give some lessons? Uh, I always think that the inflection point is when people see that there's money to be made, right? Money to be made not just in the investors getting exits, but also entrepreneurs making money along the way. Uh, and, and so it, it's, it's a blend between that and also the, the disposable income levels rising and then the you know, willingness to spend increasing so that the true market potential gets maximized. Uh, it's hard to just put a number on it. Uh, I think it'll come through a confluence of several things like economics, social, society, social reasons. Premier, you've bet all in, so. Yeah, so inflection points are also a function of solving some of the critical challenges the ecosystem may have. So here, there are issues with payments and there are issues with logistics. So if those two challenges can be solved, I think we'll see um, inflection points very, very quickly. In Turkey, for example, three years ago, E-commerce was very much still a niche interest. You know, E-commerce entrepreneurs were not celebrated. Most people you know, thought they were weirdos. Most people didn't want to risk their careers going into that space. And nobody wanted to invest. You know, fast forward to today, um, E-commerce entrepreneurs are celebrated. Uh, all the money that was sitting on the fence wants to go in. Um, so it's become mainstream. And that all happened in, you know, in two and a half years, basically. And I think it's going to happen here. I think we're seeing the beginning of it here. You know, one of the quick questions I have on that, because I, I ask a lot of people this, is with that precedent of Turkey and of elsewhere in, in what we used to call emerging markets, doesn't that argue that it could in fact happen faster here? Because there's precedent to, to use, there's experience 